Hello guys and welcome to another video and this time we will be driving this group too and I'll just try to explain all of the concepts that I'm thinking about and all of those real-time examples that I always think about when I'm driving and I always keep in mind that I will try to make this video as simple as possible so please let me know down in the comments if you got any questions or is there any way that I can help you further so please let me know down in the comments and yeah, we will just start with that point. Hello. Usually, when I go around the track, I keep in mind a couple of things. So in this video, I will try to break it down and put it in very, very simple terms. Something that is very easy to understand and very easy, again, to apply. So let's go with the gears. And I think the gears and the brakes are the most important aspect of any racing or in this case as group two. So as you go down in this first corner at Suzuka, I'm gotta make sure that I'm not breaking more than 50% and I'm not gonna do it for a very, very long time. And you might also notice that I put a little bit of power when I was exiting the corner, just in the middle of that corner, just to stabilize the back end of the car. So this technique you can use in pretty much any corner with this car. Some cars don't kind of like this concept, but this is the way you have to drive this uh, NSX. So I'm going out in fourth gear here just to prevent the car to slide in that third gear and also to kind of gain a little bit of time that I would be usually losing in upshifting. So just make sure that you always get the optimum grip, which is also the most important in here, something that I'm gonna do in this area. I'm going to the hairpin, I'm, I'm dropping to first gear and then upshifting in the second. I'm doing that because of two things. I wanna get more grip and I wanna get better acceleration and in the end, that means that you will probably gain a little bit of time by not upshifting. And also this way, I'm going here in third gear and you might want to notice that the car was pretty unstable. I couldn't keep it under control when I was going around that corner and this should have been done in fourth gear. So sometimes when I'm, you know, when I'm just driving around in circles, I'm thinking about it. Okay, maybe I should have done this uh, a little bit earlier. Maybe I should have turned in a little bit later. And all of those little things on the track, for example, here, maybe break in a little bit later than the 50 meter sign. And also just try to break this car into the line. And also when you're braking, do not try to brake too hard and then turn. I, I think I explained this concept a lot of times, but we will go into detail in the next section of this video. And this was a pretty pretty insane race that I've just done in the Nations Cup and it's really about not breaking that long so please don't break long. Group 2 is kind of a special group where you just need to apply the brakes and let the car to rotate. So you can see I wasn't on the brakes for a very very long time. I was just on the braking point hitting the brakes and after about let's say a second and a half then I'm releasing the brakes and focusing on the downforce of the car this is where you will find the car really stable so if you have the downforce the car will be stable if you don't have the downforce the car will be kind of twitchy on the way out of the corners it can be kind of difficult even to make a stable entry like I'm showing it to like here so if you don't have the speed the car cannot turn because also it doesn't have the downforce but also if you lock the front wheels by turning too much the car again won't be able to turn that well so you will probably understeer or just something unexpected will be you know just unexpected things will happen so just making the car is under control and then you can apply this concept so getting around this corner i wasn't turning too much and i wasn't kind of thinking about downshifting too early and again i will be exiting in a higher gear which means again i will have more grip and i will probably gain a little bit of time by literally not upshifting but this is special so i'm braking and then turning because this car is quite kind of quite twitchy when you're going around in turns and you have to keep it under control especially the back end so in some corners where you think okay i might get the car loose so it's better to kind of get on the brakes and then turn in easily i would say easily very very easily and this is also something that you're trying to abuse like this lift to rotate concept so whenever you need to let's say rotate the car a little bit more sometimes it can be kind of overwhelming like it was here look i lost the I, I kind of lost the back end a bit and lost a bit of time. So whenever you lift, you kind of try to rotate the car. So I will go to the 
top split winner here. This was Quinton, and this is his driving style. And all of those concepts that I was talking about earlier, you're gonna see it here. So he's braking, and then for a very, very short while, and then he's just stabilizing the car on the entry. So he's not waiting for the apex to start accelerating. So he's stabilizing the car even before the apex, and then, you know, fully applying the, the throttle and everything else. So keeping the car under control is a must. You can see like a 10, 15, and maybe up to 20, 20%, 20 just to stabilize the back end of the car. And every moment that it takes that you're sliding around the track, you're losing time. So whenever you're kind of getting that kind of not very clean exit on the way out of certain turns, you're losing time. You're definitely losing time. So this concept, I think it can really, really help you to kind of get the car stable and get the car you know, get the car going even quicker around some turns. And this is also something that he's using. So 80% on the brakes, which means that he will probably by the end of the race get better tire wear. So he will have better tires by, let's say, by the end of this race. And this will allow him to pull away and maybe put a kind of a second and a half, maybe two seconds during this stint so in 13 laps in this way he will probably save around a second and a half two seconds so it's not huge and it takes an incredible skill to do something like that but eventually if you're fighting for the lead of the race every little detail can mean so much and you can see his tire wear at this point it wasn't the best and i tried comparing that tire wear to my tire wear and it was kind of the same i'm not going to be saying that it was the same it was kind of the same, but I only had the right front tire kind of burned up a little bit more. And that was probably because of the excess rotation and also the excess trail braking that I'm doing. And now I'm going to jump into this circuit experience. This was at Fuji and we will be driving another car. So here I'm driving the RCF. And also, let's go have a look at the concepts that I'm using in here. So not a lot of braking once again, not a lot of trail braking, upshifting into a higher gear and then revving up the car. So every time that you kind of get uh, a different car, you also have to check out a couple of things like when you need to shift, when is the good area to kind of lift, when you need to brake, how much, you know, how much can you actually brake and turn at the same time. So every car is a little bit different, so keep that in mind. But I also try to keep the car stable in every single way. So it doesn't matter which car you're driving, so keep the car stable. And for example, here, I tried getting on the power as early as I could. I kind of didn't do it right in this turn. So I upshift in the second gear to get the more traction out of the car and also to keep my car a little bit stabler than it usually is. And also I'm saving myself that additional upshift. So let's say you're upshifting 10 times more than the other guys and by each upshift or no shift, let's say it's an upshift, you're losing about 50 thousandths of a second. So after 10 upshifts, it's going to be 50 times 10, which equals to half a second. So that half a second won't mean that much. But if you're doing that over the course of one lap, half a second is huge. And if you're doing that for, let's say, 10 times in, in a 10 lap race, you're losing five seconds. And five seconds, it's really something that it's very hard to find at some levels and it's something that you know you kind of get for free if you just upshift in a higher gear so guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and if you really liked it you can even subscribe to the channel and like it but i will catch you guys in another video so until the next time bye